as I also overcame and sat down beside my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear and heed what the Spirit says to the churches. You see, hearing it has to be a beginning and not an end. And for too many of us, it's the end. We'll hear it, we'll walk out, won't remember what was preached, get in our cars and go right back to life as usual, doing absolutely nothing to increase the kingdom of God. Now, this doesn't apply to everybody. There are some that work diligently to populate the kingdom. And there are others that haven't done anything in 30 years. So we need to hear this word today, and if it, pl- if it applies to you, wear it. Amen? Amen. we got to put it on. we got to put the word on. Mm-hmm. I told you before about a little Italian man who used to be in my first church, in Christ the Redeemer Church. And every time he'd hear a word that he liked, he'd jump to his feet and he'd yell, you got to give it this a legs. <laughs> in other words, you got to live this, man. You can't yeah. just hear this. you got to walk it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That man gave it legs. You know what he used to do? He had an ark built. It was a giant wooden ark on a truck chassis. And he used to drive around Long Island to shopping centers or wherever he could go where he'd find people and preach the gospel to complete strangers. (laughs) He gave it legs. Amen? Uh Jesus is knocking at the door of the church. I almost find this humiliating. Friends, what disturbs me is that this word is being spoken to a saved, sanctified, and justified group of believers. He has to continually knock and ask us, we'll open the door and let him in. Well, if we haven't opened the door and let him in, who's here? There's a spirit of, there's a carnal spirit that's overwhelming the church today. I couldn't believe it. I sort of, you know, I, I'm on Facebook because we have videos. We have hundreds and hundreds of videos on Facebook. So I go on there to check and just see what's going on. And the other day I saw this, what do they call it, a meme, I guess? You know, when you got a picture of then and now. And there was a bunch of, of women sitting in the front row of a church back in probably the 50s. And they had dresses on down their ankles and they had hats on and they were the picture of modesty and if anybody got in their way, they beat them with a rolling pin. <laughs> then they had a picture of three young women today with their anatomy hanging out all over the place in the front row of a church. What's wrong with this picture? Huh? I mean, yeah, everything. And And... I, the Lord didn't give me this word to beat you up with it today. Mm-hmm. He gave me this word today to wake you up with it. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen? Not just you, but this word is going out all over the world right now. That's the amazing thing. That little camera right there. Oh, huh? awesome. Going through that cable right there, downstairs, <laughs> and out through Optimum's one gig, or whatever it is, <laughs> to the world. Somehow, There's yeah, people somehow. right now in the Philippines shouting, yeah, preach it, brother. (laughs) All over Africa. Nations all over Africa. All over the place. Pakistan. You know how many emails and and messages I get every week from Pakistan? I got like 20 invitations to preach in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Frankly, at this stage of my life, I'm not leaving Long Island. (laughs) But I get invitations to at least 10 different countries in Africa. And to Pakistan, to India, all over the place. Because of that little camera right there. we got to get the word out. Listen, I I said to, I think it was to Novi before service. On on the table in in the lobby, there were two containers full of tracks. I said, you wouldn't believe the amount of time I spend on those silly tracks. Because they all have to be stamped. And, And... We've had them so long and they haven't been given out that we've changed locations. Mm -hmm. And the old location was still on them. So I had to print labels and put the labels over the stamps. Uh I mean, I literally spend hours putting those together so that somebody could give them out, but they're never given out. They're never taken. Mm -hmm. 
So unless they can walk out the door by themselves and throw <laughs> themselves into someone's hand, they're not they're going to waste. So this is what the Lord is talking about. My wife's telling me, stop, stop. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus is saying, Come on, man. I did my part. And it was a lot harder than you than your part. He says, I'm standing at the door, I'm knocking. All you got to do is open the door. I'll come in and I'll do the rest. Amen. 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 And this is this is really the word for today. He, he's knocking at the door. Who will let him in? Friends, it was prophesied long ago that this day would, would arrive. Amen. Uh, a day in which the church finds itself struggling for relevance. Uh, struggling with the commitment of its members and, and perceived relevance in the community. And, and relevance in our culture. Amen? Amen? When the church will be struggling with attendance and finances and, and even purity amongst the, the, the clergy. Uh, no, I'm good. <laughs> Praise God. Don't get no wrong ideas. But there's a lot of stuff going on out there that's really wrong. Uh -huh. and, and the world, they might not be saved, but that doesn't make them stupid and blind. They see what's going on. Huh? Friends, much of the problem, as I see it, is the result of many Christians having lived compromised and uncommitted lives. They're avoiding being identified as believers. Hmm? You're, you're kind of like trying to cruise through life on stealth. Where nobody can see you. Nobody will know that you're a believer. Huh? For fear of being marginalized or criticized. Because that's what the world does. We live in what's called a cancel culture. If they don't like you or what you represent, they cancel you. I don't care. Cancel me. But we, yeah, listen... I don't have to answer to the world. I don't have to please the world. But I answer to Jesus and I live to please him. And we need to do this. Much of the world is, is and unfortunately, some of the church is living with a Peter mentality. What do I mean by that? And I don't mean Peter, Peter, pumpkin. <laughs> Something was revealed about Peter in all four Gospels. And, and I'm going to read you this from Luke 22. And, and I want you to hear what Jesus said to Peter at the Last Supper. In Luke 22 and 34 in the New Living Translation, it says, But Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. This was Peter. He walked with him, talked with him, ate with him, slept near him. Now, I want you to see the outcome of Jesus' prophecy. That was a prophetic word. In Luke 22, beginning in 54, again in the New Living Translation. So they arrested him, Jesus. And they led him to the high priest's home. And Peter followed at a distance. That right there tells you something's wrong. Yeah. He was trailing way behind, just kind of like keeping up. You know how when you try to follow somebody on the parkway? You got to try to follow my son Stephen on the parkway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you need a special anointing. <laughs> But when you try to follow someone on the parkway, you're, you're like at a distance, but you're just trying to keep an eye on their car. Huh? Peter was following Jesus at a distance. It says the guards lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter joined them there. A servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. She was mean mugging him. <laughs> Finally, she said, this man was with Jesus. One of Jesus' followers. But Peter denied in 57. Woman, he said, I don't even know him. 
After a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. No, man, I'm not, Peter retorted. About an hour later, someone else insisted, this must be one of them, because he's a Galilean too. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times, or deny that you even know me. And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. You see, what the Lord is trying to do today is prevent us from winding up in that place where we're weeping bitterly for what we didn't do. He says, I'm knocking at the door. All you've got to do is open it. But you know what? Jesus, his real agony began by the abandonment of his disciples. Before anybody beat him, tore his beard out or anything else, the hurt began with that abandonment. Listen, this is not a word today to condemn the church, but the Lord is really trying desperately to wake it up. Amen? Amen. The reasons for the, this malady in the church are, are many, some of which are identified by John in the book of Revelation, in Revelation 3 and 1. In the New Living Translation, it says, this is all prophetic, write this letter to the angel of the church of Sardis. This is the message from the one who has the sevenfold spirit of God and the seven stars. I know all things about you, that you have a reputation for being alive. Listen, but you are dead. Whoa. <laughs> the first two words of the next verse. Wake up! That's what Jesus is saying to the church right now. Wake up. Strengthen. Listen to what he says. Strengthen what little remains for even what is left is almost dead. I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my God. Go back to what you heard and believed at first. Hold to it firmly. Repent and turn to me again. If you don't wake up, I'll come to you suddenly as unexpected as a thief. Listen, our lack of commitment, one day we're going to answer for it. Hear me when I tell you. He's not going to accept excuses. Oh, I chose to sleep in that day. Next time you need a miracle, you're not going to want him sleeping in on you. We can find more excuses not one day a week he asks us to give him. And we can't do it. Too many other things that are important. God wants no one before him. No thing before him. No person before him. No priorities before him. I know this isn't the cushy, comfy, encouraging word that you usually get. But you know what? This is what we need to hear. I mean, my mother was a wonderful woman, but every once in a while I get a swat on the butt too. She was pretty good about that though. <laughs> Stephen used to hide the wooden spoons. <laughs> Actually, my wife had an orange plastic spoon, a sauce spoon, you know. And, and she couldn't find it for the longest time. He hid it under a cushion in the couch. Pretty clever. <laughs> Listen to what Jesus said. The remedy? He says, go back to what you heard and believed at first. You know, sometimes we get so cocky in our knowledge. Oh, I know that. I know that. I know that. That's called unteachable. You know how many times I've heard that? I stopped, pretty much stopped counseling. I did. Because everybody that wanted counsel knew it. So what are you here for? To tell me what you know? We do very little counseling. God gave you a Bible. Read it. It's all in there. Go back to what you heard and believed at first. Hold to it firmly. Repent and turn to me again. 
if you don't wake up, I'll come to you suddenly as, as unexpected as a thief. Church. So the next church, I didn't do them all. I just kind of picked a couple of good ones. In Revelation 3, 14 through 16, he's now speaking to the church at Laodicea. And writes, this is the message from the one who is the amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. I know all the things that you do. That you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you're lukewarm, like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I'll spit you out of my mouth. I don't want to be spit out of his mouth. He says, come on, get committed, get off the fence. Stop talking like a Christian and living like a heathen. You're not fooling me. I mean, church, we're not, we're not fooling him. We got to get real. We got to get busy. I chat, Listen, the weather's warming up. And, and you know what we're going to have to do? And, and I can't do this really much, much longer. I, I've done it for many, many years. But unless the Lord restores both of my knees overnight, I'm not walking the neighborhood. But we need to get out and bang on doors in the neighborhood and introduce ourselves. As soon as this other church leaves and we straighten out this altar and get that done, we're going to get out there because the only signs that will be out in front of this building will be ours. And we need to invite them in instead of expecting the door to open the bus. Yeah, yeah. Expecting a bus to pull into the parking lot and all these heathens run through the door saying, save me. <laughs> we got we to gotta do what the Lord told us. He said, go uh -huh. ye. Yeah. So instead, we want to sit around and see who went. We got to go. It starts with those tracks on the back table. I got, there's a pile of myth about Easter. Take one. Take three. Give them out. If you don't invite people, they're not coming. <laughs> Friends, the way things are in this world, Listen, things can't just remain the way they are. The church has to wake up and the church has to heat up. Again, this is not a message to condemn the church. It's a wake-up call. Huh? It's to warn us of what Jesus saw coming. And, and for some in the church, that day has come. I, I just read that one of the world's largest and most influential Pentecostal churches is closing up. They closed two of the largest branches in the world. And, and the general overseer of the whole group just resigned and stepped down. Wow. Friends, Jesus saw this coming. And he's trying to warn us before it's too late. Amen. Hear these opening verses again. Behold, I stand at the door of the church and continually knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. What a great promise that is. Now, he's not just talking about this door of this building. You're the church. He's knocking at the door of your heart. He's saying, come on, man. I'm more than paper and ink. Open the door of your heart and let me live in there. Let me occupy you. Let me take up residence in you. And he who overcomes the world through believing, he says, that day I'm going to grant him the privilege to sit beside me on my throne. Hallelujah. What a word that is. 
But then he went on to say, you got an ear that hears? Heed, heed, heed. You know what that means? Do it. Obey. It's all about action. It's all about what we do, not just what we say. Church, in these end times, we got to heed the word of the Lord and really press into the things of God. Things around us are rapidly changing. Much of the world right now is troubled and fearful. Yet the mindset and attitude of much of the church is still largely unchanged. La -da 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 -da. Everything is good. Everything is wonderful. That used to be an old song. Yeah, now you know why I'm not in the worship team. <laughs> Listen, there's large atheist nations, oh. nuclear atheist oh, nations Amen. that are aggressively flexing their muscles and joining forces, all with an eye on world domination. Yes. And you know who they want to dominate, don't you? You and me. We're the target. They call us the great Satan. How's that? for a twist on fate. <laughs> we are Russia, China, Iran, and now North Korea. They just rose up from the ashes and fired an intercontinental ballistic missile that's capable of multiple nuclear warheads and capable of reaching the US in violation of every treaty they've ever signed. They just did it. Why? Because our government is doing nothing to nobody. I don't want to get into politics. <laughs> Friends, all this that's going on right now is breeding worldwide fear, instability, and uncertainty. What a time. Come on, think about this. What a time to capitalize on this. Amen. What a time for the world to discover the outstretched hand of Jesus. Amen. Huh? Listen, the ministry of Jesus was begun in just such times as this. During a Roman occupation. During a time of Roman oppression. Huh? That's when Jesus started preaching the word. Because you know what? The people had an ear to hear it. Tell me something good. Tell me that something else can come out of this. Beside fear and misery. And death. At this very moment, there are threats and fears of World War III, yeah. of nuclear disaster. There are fears, thanks to a couple of weird comments the other day, of worldwide famine. Our president said, the world is going to get hungry. What? Yeah. He prophesied worldwide hunger. And, and again, this isn't a political message. I'm just stating what was, has been publicly stated. He also curled, called for a new world order with him leading it. That, that, that statement right there has passed through the lips of, of every nut job that has ever <laughs> led any government in history. They all want the new world order with themselves at the helm. Amen? Hitler wanted a new world order. Every lunatic in, in politics has promoted new world order. And everybody was afraid to say it publicly. Now it's out there. George Soros has spent, listen to this, 32 billion with a B. One man did this. 32 billion dollars he spent so far trying to undermine your government. Because he's the, 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 the big proponent of new world order. Friends, these are the times we're living in. I'm not making this stuff up, but I'm not trying to scare you. There's a, a push right now for world domination by communist and socialist dictators. They see a world of oppression like you've never seen before. What a time to be offered an introduction 
to the Prince of Peace. Amen. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Churches, is it any wonder that Jesus prophetically called for an end to the lukewarmness of the church? Yeah. We are his hope in this world. Yes. Amen. The church yeah. is the Lord's hope in the world. Yeah. We gotta get busy. We, we've got to get serious about the things of God. And, and friends, listen, when we get physically hungry, I wish I had better control of this, few hesitate to get up and feed themselves. Sometimes at night, you know, I try not to eat at night. I find myself on the edge of the couch like this. <laughs> but we need a spiritual hunger like that. Yes. A spiritual hunger that we're going to seek to satisfy, that we'll be in hot pursuit of. Amen? Listen to this promise of Jesus. In Matthew 5 and verse 6 in the Amplified, he said, Blessed, joyful, nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who actively seek right standing with God, for they will be, listen, completely satisfied. Amen. You know what that means? Left wanting nothing. Oh, oh I'll take that. Hallelujah. How about you? Yes. But there's a key. There's a condition. you got to be hungering and thirsting for the things of God. you got to be in hot pursuit of the King of Kings. Amen? Amen. Now, now listen, because the promise isn't over. Thank that you, was Lord. just the beginning. <laughs> In Matthew 5, beginning in verse 10, in the Amplified again, it says, Jesus said, Blessed, comforted by inner peace and God's love are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right. we got to stop wanting to be the stealth church. Paul said, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Be bold. That's right. He said, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. Blessed, in verse 11, morally courageous and spiritually alive. Listen, with life joy in God's goodness. It's all about God's goodness. Are you, when people insult you and persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of your association with me? Be glad, he says. And exceedingly joyful, for your reward in heaven is great. Absolute, listen, absolutely inexhaustible. For in this same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Church, we're in good company. But we got to stop hiding in the bushes. We got to stand up and be seen. Stand up, speak up, and be heard. We're never going to make an impact by, by being an undercover Christian. Amen? Who was an undercover brother? Used to be a funny <laughs> thing on TV, the undercover oh, brother. Uh, we got to stop yeah. being the undercover brother. <laughs> I'm going to close with these words from the Psalmist David. Worship team, you want to head up this way? <laughs> Psalm 1, verses 1 through 6 in the New Living Translation. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners. Or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They, those who pursue the things of God, those who get in the word, those who meditate on it day and night, they are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. You never are found barren. You're always found fruitful. Amen. Their leaves never wither. And they prosper, listen, in all that they do. Amen. In all that they do. Yes. He says, but not the wicked. They're like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly. But the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Friends, I hope you receive this word today in the right spirit. Because it's intended to do one thing and one thing only. Stand you up. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. There isn't one of us in this room today that's perfect. 
There isn't one of us in this room today that can't be a better Christian, a, a, a better mother, a better father, a better friend, a better something. We're not there. Kind of like the prophet Isaiah said, I'm still undone, man. And God has me up here today to help you get done. Listen, I'm preaching to me as much as I'm preaching to you. This is the word we all need to hear. You know why? Because we're all the church. Amen. Every one of us is the church. And the Lord says, come on, man. I'm knocking. Will you let me in? Please let me in. We just stand with you. Thank you, Jesus. Friends, this, this is going to take a renewed commitment. And the time to make that commitment is now. So I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I lay down my life, I lay down my life and, I take up yours. and I take up yours. I hear you knocking at the door. Come in. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Reign over my life. Dictate my thoughts. Dictate my actions. Dictate my words. Live in me. Live through me. Speak through me. Achieve through me. And help me achieve my destiny. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To God be the glory. Come on, give him a shout. Praise God.